Hallelujah. Um, can we give the Lord the best clap offering this afternoon? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for everything bestowed and for all the lives of the servant that you have used here this afternoon. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I ask each and everyone to stand up in honor and in welcome of the word of the Lord? I just want to read Matthew chapter 25. But in lieu of this afternoon service and in lieu of everything that has been happening the last 24 hours or so, I encourage you to you go and review the Matthew chapter 24 and the Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, it says in here, At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like a ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamp but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, There may not be enough for both of us, Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said. Open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth. I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Let us pray. Most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you for your words. Thank you for each and every breath, Father God, that comes from you, that have embodied these words, O Lord. Father, thank you for reminding us once again that we do not know the time nor the hour where your coming is. But thank you very much in spite of that because once again, this afternoon, you are allowing us that opportunity to be reminded by you. Lord, my prayer for each and every one of us, including people joining us online, including people, Father God, who will come across this service at a later times, if time ex still exists then, that, Lord, I pray for the spirit of understanding. I pray for the spirit of clarity to be upon each and every one. Father, I pray that you open the spiritual senses of each and every one, Father God, so that we will not just be merely listening to your words, so that this part of the service is just is more than the part where we share your words. But Father, May we learn from you. May we know you and may we embody your words, O God. And Lord, I pray 
Let there be time still, Father, for us to repent and change our ways. Before this time and the hour comes in which we do not know when, they could be imminent. So, Father God, we invite your Holy Spirit to talk to us, to preach to us, to teach to us this afternoon, Father God. Lord, I am just a mere mouthpiece. All of this is you, Lord. So, I pray for the Holy Spirit, Father God, to convict each and every one of us with the words that we are about to share this afternoon. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Uh, Sister Alice, 15 minutes, pero kalahati ng 15 minutes, ha? Pwede pala. Hallelujah. Amen. And we welcome Sister Tess back. You have been uh, away as well from... Uh, was it three weeks? Three weeks that you were not with us? Wow. Uh, even now, nangangamoy Canada. It smells Canada. I can see your picture. It seems that, uh, ano yung tawag dun? Um, gamay, no? Um, what do you call that one in Tagalog? When you are, uh, yeah, it seems that you were very settled in Canada. And indeed, I haven't been to Canada, but indeed, looking at the pictures of uh, Sister Tess, you can really see the difference. Amen. I hope that those people in Canada, if they see your picture here in the UK, they can tell the same. <laughs> Hallelujah. So my dear brothers and sisters, where's David? David is there. Um, yeah, just like Brother Ramon said, and Brother David mentioned as well earlier, I believe that all of us have that collective feelings and have that collective thoughts of what is happening right now in Israel. And personally, my heart is in pain, my heart is crashing with what is happening to the people of God, to what is happening in Israel right now. So my dear brothers and sisters, up until yesterday, um, uh, yeah, up until yesterday, up until Friday, um, I had a, a, a different message prepared. And uh, when all the world woke up in Saturday morning with the news of the devastation of the terrorist attack that is happening in Israel right now, I had that deep burden. I have that deep desire to once again go back to the message of the Lord that is really very relevant right now. Amen? And you know what is that message, my dear brothers and sisters? Talks about the end times. Amen? It talks about the end times. And with what is happening right now, with urgency, I really have that conviction. I'm sure that we have heard end times many times. In this church alone, from the beginning of the year up until this time, how many times that we mention about end times? But my dear brothers and sisters, with urgency, with deep desire, I want us to learn about the end times once more. Amen? Because it is a very serious situation. Just like Brother Ramon said, we are very thankful because we are here in this place without feeling the fear of disturbance without feeling the fear of destruction that the people in Israel are experiencing. But my dear brothers and sisters, as a Christian, as a believer, there is that sense of urgency. There is that sense of importance. 
If you are a committed Christian, if you are a committed believer, this should be, at the moment, this should be the core and batter of what we are studying, to be honest. You know, we have been, we have just concluded studying the feast. And we said that the three feasts that we dwell on the last three weeks, it talks about the end times. So without us realizing, even the last three weeks, we were talking about the end times. My dear brothers and sisters. So this should interest us all. Amen? And I pray for the Spirit of God to inject that interest sa atin when it comes to this message because it is very important. Amen, church? So, up until this moment, my dear brothers and sisters, when I tune in this morning, up until this moment, the reports are in excess of 300 people were killed. In excess of thousands were injured and dozens of people are captured back into the Palestinian territory of which between you and me it's probably we could probably think the worst we could probably think of that we don't think that these people will be able to come back to life after that Yes, they were captured. We do not know if they are still alive. I show clips. I saw clips this morning of British citizens, of um, Asian citizens, of German citizens who were murdered that time. Up until this moment, my dear brothers and sisters, they cannot account the whole uh, they cannot account the whole picture of what is happening so as we have all known yesterday afternoon or yesterday morning early morning the terrorist arm of the palestinian group they are called they call themselves hamas and this hamas group my dear brothers and sisters they are funded by iran the terrorist group Hamas attacked Israel and what we now know as the most devastating attack that the Palestinians carried out in decades. They attacked through the air more than 5,000 missiles and drones they sent to Israel. The Iron Dome was only able to intercept but it cannot be avoidable that mo many of these missiles reach the boundary, but even reach as far as Tel Aviv, the center of Israel. People attack through land, paratroopers. Well, even the Palestinians are evolving. Paratroopers, and they came without provocation. They ransack home. They kill people in their home. They kill people in their car. They burned people. They burned properties. They capture people, take them in their own territory. They attack via the sea as well. Boats arrive on the seashores of Israel. So my dear brothers and sisters, it is really very devastating. Very sad, in London and in other capital of the countries of nations, there are people celebrating the attack. There are people celebrating the attack. And just like me and Brother Ramon was uh, talking earlier, that, oh, the Israelites have retaliated. Of course, that is the most sane country would do. That would be the most sane leader, will ask, to retaliate after such attack. But knowing the history of Israel, knowing the bloodline that runs in the blood of Israel, 
Remember Samson? When the Philistines attacked Israel, Samson retaliated and killed more Philistines. During the king time of David, when the Philistines attacked Israel, David sent an army to destroy them. The Jewish blood, the Jewish nation is not known to keep quiet. It is not known to show things under the carpet. Like what I have said, the Israelites are like the French. Attack first before you explain. And the, the British, they have a lot of explaining to do before they want to do what they want to do. And eventually, what they want to do, they, do, they are not able to carry it out. But my dear brothers and sisters, I want to quote what the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu issued a statement. He responded with a wave of airstrike on key targets within the Palestinian territory. Amen? And he directly says that Israel is at war. It is not an escalation. It is not an operation. But said that Israel is at war. And he vowed that this terrorist group will pay a price it has never known. Amen? So my dear brothers and sisters, there is a war happening at the epicenter of the world. You know, if you have a map, even if you have a map right now, spread it, we can all pinpoint in the middle. You know where the heart is? The heart is the center of the body. Amen? If you spread a map and you point even with the closed eyes in the center, you will find out that you are pointing at Israel. And I believe, my dear brothers and sisters, that Israel is at the heart of the world. Everything that happens in the heart is reflected in all the parts of the body. Amen? And right now, my dear brothers and sisters, there is a war happening in the epicenter of the heart. And this is the thing that we need to keep close attention to. This war in Israel is the thing, is the one that we need to keep an eye on to. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, there is a war happening right now in Ukraine for a few years now. There is a war in Africa. There is a war even in some part of Asia. There is a war happening everywhere. But my dear brothers and sisters, this war, they are the wrapping. They are the wrapping. The parcel is what is happening in Israel. Amen? You know, if a present, the present has a wrapping, Although the wrapping is important to preserve the present, but the most important is what is the present? Same thing, all these wars that is happening, I'm not saying that they are not important. I'm not saying that they are not relevant. But my dear brothers and sisters, everything that is happening around, they are the wrappings. The parcel is what is happening in Israel right now. Matthew chapter 24, beginning at verse 4, Jesus answered and said to him, said to them, These are the apostles where they were in Jerusalem and they asked Jesus, Jesus, can you give us a hint? Can you give us a time frame? When would be the time of your return? When would be the time of the end of age? When will be your coming again? And Jesus said in verse 4, Take heed that no man deceives you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am the Christ and shall deceive many. Number one, take heed, be careful that no one deceives you. Saying, the question is, Lord, when are you coming back? Amen. 
Before my coming back, there will be a lot of claims that I am Him who came back. Does it make sense, my dear brothers and sisters? That's why Jesus said that, Take heed, be careful that no one deceives you, telling that I am them. Amen? My dear brothers and sisters, even before Christ came as the Messiah, Many people came before Him claiming that they are the Messiah, they are the chosen one. Even after immediately when Jesus Christ returned to heavens, many came out claiming that they are the Messiah. I've got some example in here. A Samaritan called Dositius. Immediately after Jesus Christ went back to heaven, there is a man, a Samaritan called Dositius, who came out and said that, I am the Messiah. If you look at my Facebook profile, I have a picture with John the Baptist and all the other major people in the Bible. In 100 A.D., there is a Jewish name called Shimon Bar Kokhba. Up until now, the Jewish people thought that he was the first coming of Messiah. Because Shimon Bar Kokhba came and claimed to the Messiah and he led the people of Israel in revolt against Rome. Is it that, that what the Israelites were expecting then? That's why when Jesus Christ came, they said, Hosanna to the King, expecting for Jesus to lead them in a revolt against Rome. But when Jesus Christ said, that is not the purpose of my coming, I am, I am here to free you spiritually, that's why they shout, crucify, crucify. But after that, my dear brothers and sisters, Shimon Bar Kokhba came, claiming to be the Messiah, and up until now, many Jewish people believes that he was the first coming of the Messiah. Hallelujah! Henry Cristo, a man from Brazil, he claims to be the Messiah. San Myung Moon, a man from South Korea. You know the church Moonies? The church where they uh, carry out mass wedding and all that. The unification church. He came to claim out to be the Messiah. Apollo Kibuloy. Filipino. Kingdom of Jesus Christ in the south. He claims to be the Messiah. Amen. Senor Aguila. If you don't know Senor Aguila, check it in Google. Filipino. He claims to be the Messiah. And many more. These are just few examples. And these people deceive millions. And Jesus said, Take heed that no one will deceive you. Claiming that I am the Christ. Claiming that I have returned. Amen. It's different on a later part when he said that there will be false prophets and false teachers. And false believer for that sake. Amen. Let's continue. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you not be troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Jesus is talking to the people of Israel during that time. And when he say that, you will see or you will hear wars and rumors of war. What happened if you will hear? It did not say you will experience. You will see, you will hear. If you say you will hear something external. Amen. It's not internal. So Jesus said to the people before, you will hear wars and rumors of war. If you are in Israel, you hear wars happening in Ukraine. You hear wars happening elsewhere. There are rumors of war. North Korea has been threatening to attack South Korea for decades. Is that not a rumor? 
China has been threatening to attack Taiwan for decades. Is that not a rumor? Now they are threatening to attack the Philippines. Is that not a rumor? But the Lord said, that is not yet. Amen. All these things will happen, and that is not yet. Verse 7, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. We know that. And there shall be famines from, the, from before up until now. You know, even we are very blessed that, you know, when we were growing up, the famine that is happening in Negros, that was a terrible famine. Younger guys, you probably have not heard about this, that one time when your parents, when your uncles and aunties were young, there is a severe famine that happened in the Philippines. Negros. There is a severe famine in Africa from then until now. Pestilences. COVID. And we know that there are more coming. Earthquakes in diverse places. And what the Lord Jesus said in verse 8, all of these are the beginning of sorrows. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. All those that Jesus Christ mentioned, did they happen or not? Hello? Did they happen or not? They happened and they're still happening. And if they are happening, so what is happening right now? Jesus said, these are the beginning of sorrows, the birth pain, the birth pangs. Amen? The beginning of sorrow. What is the sorrow that we are talking about? There is going to be a seven year of sorrow. Divided into two. The first three and a half years, the Bible calls it as the tribulation. The second three and a half years, it is called the great tribulation. The great tribulation meaning it is an event, it is an occurrence that's so severe. No one has seen or experienced nor encountered before. Before COVID came, has anyone encountered COVID before? Nothing, no one. But we know that in the great tribulation, it is worse and it is more severe than that. The word of the Lord said, you know, if the Lord made it another four, uh, four years, no one will survive. No one will endure. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu explicitly says, Israel is, Israel is at war. Israel is at war. And what happened if there is war? What is the cry of all the people, the affected people on both sides if there is war? What is the clamor of the nations? What is the clamor of the coalition of nations? What is the clamor of the United Nations if there is war? What is the cry and prayer of the Christians if there is war? Anyone? Peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. If there is war, everyone will cry for peace. Is that not what David came to us earlier? Can we pray for the peace that is that happening in there? Yes, we will do that. Did we not exhort each other? Let's pray for the peace in Israel. So again, mga kapatid, my dear brothers and sisters, what happens if there is war? What is the clamor of everyone? Peace. Peace. Few weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, to be precise, in September 22, 2023, uh, you know what, David? 
Paula was here last time, your visitor. Yeah? Paula was here. I had a discussion with her and I was so blessed. I realized that she is a hardcore teacher as well. And her inclination is end times. And she appreciated our message last time because she said that, you know what? Not many church preach those nowadays. You know what? This is the, the, the first church that I have been in a while to preach those nowadays. And he said, are you aware of what is happening right now in the international community, especially with the pronouncement of the Israeli Prime Minister in the United Nations? And I said, what? The pronouncement of peace? Yes, I am aware. And he said that, do you believe that that is the seven-year peace treaty? And I told her, I don't think so. Although that is what will lead there, I believe that it will become worse before it gets better. And within the same week. My dear brothers and sisters, I have an excerpt in here. In September 22, 2023, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stood in the United Nations Assembly addressing the nation. And this is the excerpt of his speech during that time. He quoted Deuteronomy 11.29. Over three millennia ago, our great leader Moses addressed the people of Israel as they were about to enter the promised land. He said they would find there two mountains facing each other. One is Mount Gisirim, the site on which a great blessing would be proclaimed. And the other side is Mount Ebal, the site of the great curse. Moses said the people's fate would be determined by the choices they made between the blessing and curse. The same choice has echoed down the ages, not just for the people of Israel, but for all humanity. We face a choice today, he said. It will determine whether we enjoy the blessings of a historic peace of boundless prosperity and hope or suffer the curse of a horrific war of terrorism and despair. I said the day would soon arrive when Israel would be able to expand peace beyond Egypt in Jordan to other Arab neighbors. Up until recently, my dear brothers and sisters, if there is an Arab nation that, uh, that honor Israel as a nation, only Egypt in Jordan. All the rest of the neighbor, no, we don't want them. Let's kill them. But since Trump sat down as the president of the America, he bartered this Abraham Accord, which enables other country to start to barter business with Israel. And as we have known, Dubai did it. United Arab Emirates did it. Amen? Let's continue. I belong so to make peace with the Palestinians. But I also believe that we must not give the Palestinians a veto over new peace treaties with the Arab states. This is a statement, quote, in quote, okay? This is not my own. This is a statement, quote, in quote. The Palestinians could greatly believe, benefit from a broader peace. This should be a part of the process. They should be a part of the process. But they should not have a veto over the process. And I also believe that making peace with more Arab states would actually increase prospect of making peace between Israel and Palestinians. So they are clamoring for peace. Amen? For years, 
My approach to peace was rejected by the so-called experts. Apparently, he has idea on how peace will be achieved, but it's rejected by expert. Expert really meaning America, United Nations, Europe, and other coalition of nations. Well, they were wrong. Under the approach that I advocate, we tried something different, and in no time, we achieved a remarkable breakthrough. We achieved four peace treaties working with the United States. Israel forged peace, four peace agreements in four months with four Arab states, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Sudan, and Morocco. Trade and investment with our new peace partners are booming. Our nations cooperate in commerce, in energy, in water, agriculture, medicine, climate, and many, many other fields. Every day, Israelis save time and money by doing something they couldn't do for the last 70 years. You know, the last 70 years, that was the 1973 war, the War of Yom Kippur where they were able to gain more land space. Amen? So, in the last 70 years, they fly all over the Arabian Peninsula to destinations in Gulf, India, the Far East, in Australia. But I believe that we are at the cusp of an even more dramatic breakthrough. Pay attention, this is where it becomes interested. A historic peace with Saudi Arabia. Amen? So Israel and Saudi Arabia have entered into a peace treaty. And if you know, if you know, my dear brothers and sisters, the Middle East, if you want to have a best friend, Saudi Arabia is the one. Amen? Amen? If Iran, Iraq doesn't want to be friends with you, as long as Saudi Arabia is your friend. You know those Gulf War? You know the reason why that the coalition forces won? Because of Saudi Arabia. Amen. And Israel was able to have a peace treaty with Saudi Arabia. We believe that we are at the cusp of an even more dramatic breakthrough. A historic peace with Saudi Arabia. Such peace will go a long way to ending the Arab-Israeli conflict. It will encourage Arab, other Arab states to normalize relations with Israel. It will encourage or other, otherwise brabrasuhin sila ng Saudi Arabia. Amen. It will enhance the prospect of peace with the Palestinians. It will encourage a broader reconciliation between Judaism and Islam, between Jerusalem and Mecca, between the descendants of Isaac and the descendants of Israel. You know what is happening here, my dear brothers and sisters? Man, leaders of the world, are trying to repair what God has designed. Genesis chapter 16, the Lord said that the children of Ishmael will be against their brother. That the children of Ishmael will be at war with his brother. Who are the children of Ishmael? The Arabs. Who is his brother? Isaac. Who is the children of Isaac? The Jews. So from the beginning of time, God said, there will be war between you two. Let's continue. Understand the magnitude of the transformation that we seek to advance, says Netanyahu. 
when we make peace between Israel and Saudi Arabia, the whole Middle East changes. Why are they going to be changing? Pay attention. We will tear down the walls and barriers to enmity and security. Wow! That's what a, a peace should bring, isn't it? The barriers of enmity, the barriers of war, the barriers of armed conflict will be torn down. We bring the possibility of peace to this entire region. We will not only bring down barriers between Israel and our neighbors, we will build a new corridor of peace and prosperity that connects Asia through AE, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel to Europe. Wow! Hallelujah! It is perfect. It is a win-win situation. Amen? Who would not want that? Do you not want that? But we have to understand, my dear brothers and sisters, when he made that proclamation in the United Nations, when he made that proclamation, it was a vision. It was a vision. It is a vision of what they want to do. Amen. It is a proposal, my dear brothers and sisters. It is a prospect. It is a plan. It is a goal that they want to achieve. It is a desire that want to achieve. It was not automatic. Amen. In order for that vision to materialize, for that vision to happen in agreement, my dear brothers and sisters, what needs to happen? There should be an agreement of all the parties involved. Amen. There should be an agreement of all the parties involved. The Israelis, the Arabs, the coalition of Arab nation, the United Nation, and other coalition of government. Amen? Do you agree? Only then that the vision would become confirmed. Amen? So that is the goal, that is the vision, my dear brothers and sisters. And if there is an agreement of all the party, what's gonna happen? It will be confirmed. It will be established. Amen, church? Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Only then that the prospect of peace becomes valid. Hallelujah! Win-win! Go deal! Amen? Kasbi kalila! Kasbi kalila! Kasbi kalila! What does kasbi kalila mean, Sister Lorna? God forbids! God should not allow it. No, inshallah, is God allows it. God forbids. May God do not allow it. Amen. When you say, Kasbi Kalila, may it not happen. May God will not allow it. Amen. Jesus said multiple times, He who has an ears, let them hear. He who has an eyes, let them see. If you continue Matthew 24, 15, it says in there, So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Understand what? The time of sorrow has come. The time of tribulation has come. The question is, Jesus 
When is the time of your coming? Jesus, when is the time of your return? Jesus, when are you gonna come again? And Jesus, after enumerating everything that we have read earlier, it says in there, so when you see the abomination of desolation is spoken by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, the reader should understand that the time of sorrow has come. Not the time of sorrow is coming. The time of sorrow has come. It has begun, my dear brothers and sisters. What did Prophet Daniel said in Daniel 9.27? He shall make a strong covenant with many for one week. Again, to, the, to those people who are a young Christian, they probably don't understand, but in Daniel, Daniel had a vision of weeks, 70 weeks. Amen? And on those 70 weeks, my dear brothers and sisters, those one day is equivalent to one year. So when you say a week, is seven days, it is equivalent to seven years. We studied this before. I pray that the Lord will allow it again because there's few added to us since then that we can study again that one so that we are actually coming through at the same perspective. Amen. And Daniel 9.27, He shall make a strong covenant with many for one week, for seven years. And for the half of the week, three and a half years, he will put an end to sacrifices and offering. And on the wing of abomination shall come one who makes desolate until the decree end is poured out to the desolator. Jesus Christ quoted what Daniel visioned. That Jesus Christ said, so when you see the abomination of the desolation standing in the temple, then you know that the sorrow has begun. I want you to put it, take note, where I'm not going to read it. Isaiah 28, 14 to 22. You can relate that to Daniel 9.27. And this is what I'm going to explain. Isaiah 28, 14-22. It says in there, Daniel 9.27, He will make a covenant with many for one week. And what is this covenant that is mentioned? Isaiah 28, 14-22. This covenant, is made specifically between the Israel and the Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist? He is the one camouflaging to be the man of peace. He is the one camouflaging, bartering peace. The spirit of Antichrist is here ages ago, but the Antichrist will be revealed soon. The covenant is made specifically between Israel and the Antichrist. And what is this covenant? It is going to be a covenant for peace. As it will ensure and guarantee Israel's military security. We will tear down the walls of enmity. Thus the pronoun says said. You know why? Because Israel's leader, I don't know if it's Netanyahu, we don't know, 
If Netanyahu has a, pla has a role to play for the end times because Israel's leader will put their hope in the Antichrist, that the Antichrist can bring peace and not Jesus Christ. You know, if you talk about peace, about Ukraine, a lot of leaders are even not interested. But if you talk about peace, about Israel, believe me, all the world leaders are interested. So my dear brothers and sisters, Israel's leader will enter into a peace treaty with the Antichrist. They do not know. Of course they do not know. They do not know, oh, you're the Antichrist, will come in peace. No. In their eyes, they're doing the right thing. In their eyes, just like you and me crying for peace. Is that not what we were crying for? Peace? So in their eyes, they are doing the best thing for their nation, for the citizen, for the world. So that's why they want to enter into a peace with what is happening right now, the casualty that we mentioned, the, the victims that we mentioned. We mentioned the Israel side, but let us not discount maybe double on the Palestinian side. And whether you are Israel or Palestinian, you are life. You have the right to be preserved. And when people will be talking about peace, will be looking at all this picture. Amen? Little did they know that the signing of this peace treaty, what did Jesus said? The sorrow has arrived. Signing of this peace treaty is the birth of the tribulation. He shall make a covenant with many for one week. So with this, my dear brothers and sisters, this Antichrist, seemingly a man of peace, will enter into a peace treaty. So for the first three and a half years, everything is at peace. But he said, in the middle of the week, after three and a half years, he will break that covenant. That's what he said, my dear brothers and sisters. In the middle of that seven years period, the covenant will be broken. Only then will the leadership of Israel realize that it was not a true and lasting peace. My dear brothers and sisters, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1 to 8. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 8. Now concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together with Him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarm, either by spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. So yun yung sinasabi, that's what Apostle Paul said, that I warned you of any people and any, any, any talks, print out letter saying that the Lord, the day of the Lord has come. Be aware, Apostle Paul said, let no one deceive you in any way. So again, people like what we are doing now could be a deceiving factor as well. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. The one who opposes and exalts himself against 
every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Pay attention, verse 6. And you know what is restraining him now so that he may be rebuilt in his time? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who restrain it will do so until he is out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. Did we understand that, my dear brothers and sisters? Apostle Paul told to the people that beware, be wary of people who says that the time has come. That the day of the Lord has come. Jesus Christ, no, be wary. Jesus Christ said, few things must happen first. Apostle Paul said, when I was with you, I made it clear to you. No, he said that the spirit of Antichrist is already at work. Amen? Amen. Even as we gather, even before us, the spirit of Antichrist has already at work. What is the spirit of Antichrist does? It does not say that Christ is not true, no. The spirit of Antichrist places himself in the stead of Christ. And it's a spirit. It does not have to be a person. Any practices, prosperity, anything, religiosity, anything that take the stead of Christ is a spirit of Antichrist. But Jesus Christ said, the Antichrist will only be revealed when? I will read it again. And you know what is restraining him now? so that he may be rebuilt in time. Something or someone is restraining for the Antichrist to be revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. The spirit of Antichrist is already at work. But he says, only he who now restrain will do so until he is out of the way. So clearly the spirit of Antichrist is around. Antichrist is ready to be revealed. But it cannot because there is something, someone that is restraining it, is stopping it. It will only rebuild when that someone, something that is stopping it, will be taken out in there. You know the dam? You filled it with water, the dam is ready to burst out. The only thing that is restraining it is the wall. If you take away the wall of the dam, nothing is going to stop that water to burst. Same thing with the Antichrist. So what is that, my dear brothers and sisters? Who is that that is restraining it? The church. Before the Holy Spirit came, people are people. Only when the Holy Spirit came that people became church. Amen, church? And only when the church is raptured that the Antichrist will be revealed. Amen? Between you and me, if you are reading the Word of God, like what Jesus Christ said, beware because there will be false prophets. Beware because there will be false teachers. There will be false preachers. There will be false pastors. There will be false priests. You know, that's not your business. You cannot do, you cannot do anything with that. That is their calling. The enemy called them to be false. You cannot do anything with that. But what you can do is yourself. Because if you are a true believer, no matter how many faults will come, 
you will endure. But if you yourself is false, a one drop of false, it's not even, there's not even uh, a discussion. That's the reason why, again, like what I have said last time, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but with this, I have that strong inclination of rapture as a pre-tribulation event. That the Lord, it says in there, will save us from the time of the hour. My dear brothers and sisters, Rapture is not designed for the church. The church meaning the true believers in Christ. No one can say that I am a Christian but I was not able to go through the rapture. If you were not raptured, you were not a Christian. It doesn't matter what affiliation you belong. If you were not raptured, my dear brothers and sisters, you are not a Christian. Rapture is designed for the church. The tribulation is not designed for the church. The tribulation is designed for the people of Israel and everyone who comes against the nation of Israel. Amen. Tribulation is the time. You, we are in the period of grace at the moment. Amen. We are in the dispensation of grace. You do not deserve it, but it was given to you anyway. Because of the perfect, complete, finished work of our Lord Jesus in the cross. That is grace. Imagine a sinful man like me and the worst sinner among the room, among person in the room. I have not done anything. I just came to faith in the Lord and cried and asked for forgiveness and it was given me. Is that not grace? But time will come, my dear brothers and sisters. When rapture, when tribulation comes, it's not gonna be upon grace. You wanna be saved during tribulation? You keep your life. You, you want your head to be cut in order to be saved. That's the only way to be saved during the tribulation. That's the reason why, my dear brothers and sisters, that the restrictor, the church empowered by the Holy Spirit, will be raptured, will be taken, then the Antichrist will be revealed. You know, people who are saying, I'm not going to be serious right now in faith. I will do that at a later time. You know what? What encourages you? What brings you in faith? When you are listening to music, when you are listening to a preaching, when you are worshiping, when you sow, when you read something, what encourages you to come in faith? The Holy Spirit comes upon you and will rebuke you with your sin, with righteousness in the coming judgment that brings someone to repentance, that brings someone in faith. Amen. Amen. And if the Holy Spirit is here, who is doing that, and you are not coming into faith, good luck because if the Holy Spirit is not around during the tribulation, it will be harder to come to faith. Amen. You know why I believe that the church with the Holy Spirit will be raptured? Because God needed to send witness. You remember the two witness that will come and preach the gospel and many people will be saved? If the Holy Spirit is here during tribulation, God wouldn't need to send those two preachers from heaven. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is the time where we see each other in the eye, face to face. How are we? How is our faith? 
How is our walk in the Lord? Thessalonians 5. Now concerning the times and seasons, brother, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, there is peace and security. What, what does this covenant of peace will happen? According to Netanyahu, they will put down the barrier of enmity and security. So Israel will be living at peace with their neighbor. The word of the Lord says that Israel will live in a nation without walls and barriers. The old man can sit down in the side of the road without any problem. They will reap the produce of their field. They will be happy. They will be joyous. They will be in celebration. Someone is given in marriage. Someone is being taken for marriage. Like Brother Ramon said, people will be worshiping, praising without the fear of any excursion or provocation. Without realizing what is looming. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them. As labor pains come, a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in the darkness. Brother, sister, you are not in the darkness. I believe that that's the reason why that the Lord enabled you to come here today. Because the Lord wants to beam His lights upon you. Amen. So that after today, none of us people online ought to continue in the dark. Amen, church? You are not in the darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do. Let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined for us but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the wrath that we're talking is the great tribulation. And I said, God does not distend us for wrath. It says in there, you obtain salvation through Christ. If after receiving the Lord Jesus Christ and receiving salvation and yet you are still going through tribulation, then the blood of Jesus is powerless. That is the reason why that I can never agree with any other interpretation of rapture alongside the pre-tribulation one. So my dear brothers and sisters, we do not belong to the night. We were once belong to the night, but we are now in the light. Why do you want to go back to the night again? My dear brothers and sisters, the way to salvation is this. Surrender fully in the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior by faith. Amen. And lead a holy life. 
Many people, no problem doing the number one. But how about the leading a holy life? How about observing the holy life? Matthew chapter 25 that we have read, there were ten virgins. Five prepared for enough oil and five were found wanting. The five were not able to enter the banquet. The five were not able to be saved from the day of the sorrow. My dear brothers and sisters, if you are thinking that these five unprepared bridegroom are non-Christian, non-believers, then you must have to rethink twice. We are not talking about non-believers in here. We are not talking about not Christians in here. When we talk about the ten virgins, they are all Christians. Do not think that, oh, the five are talking about those non-believers. The five are talking about those people who did not accept the Lord. No, those ten virgins were all believers. Those ten virgins were all Christians. Five were able to enter into the wedding banquet. Five were unable. What qualifies the five to enter? They were ready. They were leading a holy life. They both accepted the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They both professed faith in the Lord. They both put Christian on their application in their work when they were looking for work. But five were leading a holy life. Five fell short. They fell short of oil. What is that oil, my dear brothers and sisters? Oil symbolizes anointing. If we are called in the ministry, oil symbolizes the Holy Spirit. What turned a, a person to a mere normal person into a believer? What turned them? It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. So the markmanship of a believer is the Holy Spirit. Amen, church. And without the Holy Spirit... One cannot have anointing because it is the Holy Spirit that gave birth, brings the anointing. So my dear brothers and sisters, it's quite lengthy. I do apologize. Actually, to be honest, I'm only in half about the end times. But I hope, I pray that we can reflect in the word of God with what is happening in Israel right now. What is happening in Israel right now? The, 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 the word of the Lord mandate people to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So we are going to do that. But then again, everything that is happening is within the blueprint, within the time frame of the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. As there is a great war happening in there, we are all crying for peace. Amen. So, answered prayer. Peace will be given. Amen. But we know, we just talk about it. Amen, church. So, can I invite the music team? So, I think first and foremost is... Oh, okay. Give, give her a uh, no, uh, mic. Para hindi na siya mahirapan. And our next door neighbour was in the was driving a tank in the 
um, Yom Kippur War. Oh, right. And my mother met me at the door and said, look, look who's been on the television. And that was our next door neighbor. Wow. And they were lovely neighbors. They were, uh, he had a, his wife and he yeah. had a son and a daughter. And they were based, I think they were based at Sandhurst. Yeah. So I guess the neighbor so, is a Jewish family, yeah? Um, what they were, they were um, fighting on the side of Israel. Okay. Yes, yes. So I thought I thought the people here would like to know. Hallelujah. Because I can remember it as if it was yesterday. Hallelujah. That's how clear it is. Amazing. So thank you very much. And do you happen to know in your family history? Do you have a, a hint of a Jewish blood or no? Oh, we have lots of um, Jewish connections. I'd oh, right. I'd love okay. to share them with you. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Wonderful connections. We speak blessing to Linda. We bless you. Amen. Thank, thank we you. We bless you, Linda. We speak blessing to you. Because the thank Lord you. said to Abraham, whoever blesses you, Abraham, and your descendants yes. will be blessed. Thank so, you. Yes, I, I want to stand in Mount Gizirim in this pulpit and say, God bless you. Thank you Amen. very much. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Um, yeah, so my dear brothers and sisters, like I say, Basic Life Support 101. We cannot be an instrument to save someone if we ourselves is not saved. Amen. Or, isn't it, uh, if you want to, if, uh, if someone is injured, uh, if you want to intervene, if you want to help, you have to make sure that the environment is safe before you. So, same thing with that. Amen? What I want us to do this afternoon is, especially after talking about the end times and to, talking about what is coming, what is looming. Amen? It is my desire that every one of us, excluding no one, that when that sound of the trumpet is sound, the trumpet in heaven, that is the that is the 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 um, uh, that is the call for rapture to come. And I pray that when that sound will be unleashed, that every one of us will be raptured with the Lord. Amen. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, I just want us, as the music team ushers us, I just want us to, to just once again stand in Mount Gesserim and connect with the Lord. I don't know what is in your heart right now. As I see your face, I am convinced that you are a Christian, that you are a believer. But I don't know what is in your heart. Why don't we ask the Lord right now to hallow us, to sanctify us, to perfect us, to enable us, to equip us. And why don't we come to the Lord and say that, Lord, I want to believe in you right now. I want to believe in you right now. Sod off everything that is happening. The Lord says, if you want to find your life, you must be willing to lose it. And why can't we not just lost our life this afternoon by simply putting it everything in the hands of God? Amen. And after that, we will pray for Israel. Amen. Let's stand up, church. If you're someone who needed to reconnect with the Lord, it's between you and the Lord. If it is a consolation for you, I will be doing the same. I will be coming to the Lord. 
I'll be seeking shelter in the Lord's grace and mercy and love once again this afternoon because it is all that I need. I encourage you to do the same, church. Confide in you through all my darkest moments. In you I find my peace, my comfort when I'm weak. I trust in you through storm and raging sea.
Actually, my dear brothers and sisters, the passage that the Prime Minister quoted as the people of Israel is entering the Promised Land, Moses said, according to the instruction of the Lord, that before you are two mountains, Mount Kesirim, for blessing, is going to be proclaimed in Mount Ebal where curse it's gonna be proclaimed you know it is more than the process of proclaiming the Lord said if you follow and obey everything that I have commanded you if you live your life in a way that I have commanded you, the Lord says, then you will reap blessing. But if you turn away from me, if you rebel from me, then you will be cursed. It was more than the proclamation. It was more than the declaration of blessing, my dear brothers and sisters. Even if you read it, it was more to do with being obedience to the word and disobedience to the word. My dear brothers and sisters, I challenge you in this church, we did not fall short in preaching the importance of living a submitted and committed life to the Lord. There should be no reason why no one should be able to say that I did not understand the message. I was not there when the message was preached. In a sense, we have started with the story of the ten virgins. Over the next coming weeks or even months, as a body, as a church, we're gonna enter into that season of separation. We're gonna enter into that season of separation. In that se season of separation, could either make us or break us. The word of the Lord says, separate from them. Separate from them. So my dear brothers and sisters, while there is time, let us stream our lamp let us save our oil let us persevere let us continue in the walk my dear brothers and sisters sayang in vain our coming here every Sunday if we will not be able to be included in that flight it is coming, my dear brothers and sisters. It is nigh, my dear brothers and sisters. And he will confirm a covenant with the many for one week. And he will break the covenant in the middle of the week. And when that happens, the say it, Jesus, when you see abomination of desolation standing in the holy temple then you will know you will know that you were late you will know that you were late because if you found that out personally you know that you were late because others are already in the air hallelujah Praise you, Jesus. Is there anyone in courage 
who wants to be prayed for. My dear brother, my dear sister, come. It would be a great privilege and honor to be able to pray for you and with you. Servant of God, Servant of the Lord, it is a time to be separated. Sometimes our desire, our clamor of going deeper, our clamor of anointing, empowerment. You know, sometimes, sister, servant of God, everything that you need, the Lord has already given. But sometimes we are not seeing the materialization of that because we are divided. Because sometimes when the fire of the Lord is there, we are very fire indeed. But sometimes after that fire, there is always the tendency to clamor and to desire and to wish back some that is in the world. No one can blame because it is in the world that majority, that the world can meet together. But you were called to be separated. You were called to be holy. Your calling is to be separated. Your calling is to be holy. Be separated. Be holy. Lord, thank you. Fire, Lord. Let the fire, Father, that consumes, O oh God, any dross, be upon my sister right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, revelation. Opening of those spiritual senses, Father God. Standing with affirmation in your words. In your calling. In your work, Father God. Be at the center, Lord. In Jesus' name, receive it. Receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Touch, O oh God. Holy Spirit, touch your daughter. Touch your servant, O oh God. Release. Release. Release your anointing, Lord. Release your anointing, Father God. Release your anointing, Lord. Fulfill your purpose. Fulfill your plans, O God. Continue to pray for her. Continue to pray for her. Hey, Aramamana, Shikiyara, Baba, Baba, Kendiyara, Baba, 
Ora mana na 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 shikia raba baba sakandi raba baba kandari. Make it whole, O oh God. Cup filled, Lord. It is not half full. It is not half empty. Feel, O oh God. Feel, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit come, O oh God. Feel, O oh God. Feel, Lord. Equip, O oh God. Father, you have called this servant, O oh God. You have called this servant, Lord, to lead this church, to lead this music ministry. Father, fill her up, O oh God. Fill her up, Lord. Overflowing, Lord. Father, whatever link, whatever link, be separated right now. In Jesus' name, it is time to stand firmly. It is time for us, Lord, to ensure our calling in election, Father God. In Jesus' name, you know the heart of your servant, Father. You know the heart of your servant. Let your servant appreciate your love, O oh God. Let your servant see the full measure, O oh God. And Lord, take away the veil. Take away the veil, Father God, leading, Lord, to separation. Let her be holy. Let her be separated, Father God, so that her calling and election is fulfilled, so that this music team flourish more than the talent, more than the skills. Lord, we long, we desire for a music team according to the prescription of the Bible. Use this leader. Use this servant, O oh God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Receive it, Sister Michelle. Desire it. Talk to the Lord. Commune with the Lord. And let the Lord be your guide. Tell you. We break the spirit of hesitation. We break your spirit of takot. You were called for a purpose. And that purpose you carry out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Separated, be separated, be separated. 
mama shiki ara na mama masaka na ki ara mama na shiki ara baba masaka ni di ara makanda ni hallelujah the holy spirit says if we do not know how to pray for and if we do not know what to pray for that the holy spirit intercedes with us for no one knows what is in the mind what is in the thought and in the heart of god if not the holy spirit of god and father supernaturally i do not know the need the specific needs of your people i do not know the individual needs of your people i do not know their circumstances I do not know their level of their relationship with you. But Father, I pray in the spirit that answer them according to the unique needs that they have incorporately each and every one of them, Lord. I pray for the spirit of separation to be upon them. The spirit of separation that will enable them to separate from the world. In all manner, O oh God. Lord, this church, this body, I pray for the spirit of separation upon this church, O oh God. That this church may be separated from the world. That this church may be separated from anything and everything, Father God, that will serve as a stumbling block. Lord, we want to continue in that journey we want to continue in that walk. Purify us. Hallow us. Sanctify us. So that we can continue in that journey through eternity, O oh God. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I know. I know, Father, that it is more than momentary. I know, Lord, that you're gonna talk to people after today, after this time. That you're gonna commune with people, that you're gonna convict people, that you're gonna open eyes of people, that you're gonna make people realize, that you're gonna make people recognize, that you're gonna make people make decision, Father God. Father, my prayer is for your children to persevere. My prayer is for your people, Father God, to continue in that walk. My prayer is for this church to persevere. That this church will continue its walk with you. Lord, personally, I pray upon this humble servant. Give me the spirit of firmness. Give me a strong heart, not a faint one. to carry out the works that you have called me for to do. To carry out the works that you have called me for to do. And my prayer is the same for all the leaders, to all the members of the ministry, and for all the prospective members of the ministries, 
Lord, I pray. I pray, O oh God, that our being in the ministry, Lord, is to glorify you, to serve you, to be a servant, O oh God. Give us a servant heart. Give us a servant heart, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Father, we cry, we lament with your people, the sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your chosen people, Father God, their name was Jacob. Their name was Jacob. And it is very evident. I lived. I walk. I work alongside many Jewish and Israelis. And personally, I can personally attest that they are indeed Jacob. In a manner of brewishness, of brassness, of attitude and behavior, perhaps. But Lord, thank you because they are also Israel. They have struggled, O oh God, and yet they persevered. That's what made you gave them the name Israel. From being a Jacob. to Israel because he struggled and yet persevered and Father God it's another time of struggle once again happening in the land of Israel I mean even Israelis Jewish people all over the world there is a hatred towards them there is a hatred upon them. Lord, we pray as you have commanded us to pray for the peace of this nation. I mean, peace is coming. It's just, it's two ways. There is the peace, the false peace that the Antichrist is engaging and there is the true peace that comes from you and Lord we desire the true peace that comes from you let there be true peace in Israel and we know and we do believe that that can only be achieved if these Israelites will open their eyes and accept you our Mashiach, Yeshua, as the one. You said that you are peace. You are the Prince of Peace. May you be welcome in all Israel. May you be welcome in all the Israeli family. May you be welcome in all the Jewish dwelling, Father. Being the Prince of Peace. Being the Man of Peace. Being the Yeshua HaMashiach. Father, lead and guide their Prime Minister. Lead and guide, Father God, their Defense Minister. Lead and guide, Father God, everyone in Israel. But Father God, we pray your people will prevail at the end of the day. Your people prevail at the end of the day. It's always been like that. And it will always be like that. And we pray, Father God, for the Hamas. Lord, in you, it comes blessing and curse. And I believe, Lord, that this Hamas entity, Father God, has chosen their path. 
has chosen their path, Father God. We surrender everything unto you, especially the families, Father God, in both sides, the casualties, Father God, but most importantly, the families of the people who were captured because they don't know, they cannot settle. So Lord, we cry, let there be peace in your people. Let there be peace among your land. Let there be peace upon Israel, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let there be peace upon your nation. Let there be peace upon Israel, O oh God. And Lord, today we stand in the mountain of peace, Mount Gizirim, and we cancel, we rebuke the curse that befall upon all the nation, Father God, that went against Israel, especially this nation, United Kingdom. For years and years, they have not done justice in Israel. For years and years, they were entrusted to be the vanguard of Israel. But they mistreated your people. They mistreated Israel. I was even surprised to learn that the queen, with more than 70 years of her reign, never visited Israel. She visited all the Arab nation around Israel, but she never visited Israel because of obvious reasons. Father, forgive this land. Forgive this land and all the other land who maltreated and mistreated Israel as a nation. Give them chance to redeem themselves. Give them chance, opportunity to bless your nation, O God. And all of us, Lord, thank you that you're allowing us chance to bless Israel. My dear brothers and sisters, can we just declare God bless Israel in, in your own way? Just speak blessing to Israel. Come on, people of God. Speak blessing to Israel. We love Israel, Lord. We love your people, O God. We love the sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We support them, Lord. We stand alongside them, O God. We bless them, Lord. We bless them, Lord. We pray for them, O God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And for all the people of God, in spite of or regardless of what is happening back there, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and the company of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Let's give the Lord the best club offering that we can give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I think I do apologize, music team. I think uh, we can be victorious in every way. Um, I think for this Sunday, nag, uh, we overtime. Maski wag na siguro natin kantahin yung victory song. Okay. Um, uh, let's just... Bring Sister Alice. I think this is more pressing. Let's bring Sister Alice here. And uh, if you have a message of encouragement, Sister Alice will be flying home tomorrow. And like Brother Ramon said earlier, it's going to be a very long time when we will see her again. So four weeks? <laughs> four months? Four weeks. Four years. No. Six months. So, uh, Sister Alice is traveling tomorrow. So, we want to take this opportunity to uh, to uh, uh, give her our love. So, uh, I think 
siguro mga kapatid with your indulgence with your agreement no uh, whatever it is that is uh, collected in our offering today it's uh, let's pack it and we'll uh, extend it to her as our love gift as our blessing but we will check how much is it maybe uh, someone else will uh, want to top up and add it up it should be because uh, uh, that encourage one to become a Christian. Ang isang Kristiano bless. Amen? Amen. And it's not just in word. They are truly blessed as well uh, in kind, in the natural. Amen? That's the reason why uh, the Lord said to the people of Israelites, you know, when before they leave Egypt, ask your neighbors to bless you. <laughs> so little the Israelites know that they are leaving that night. So um, have you got any, I know you have shared your testimony. Have you got any uh, specific uh, thoughts about uh, going home and uh, what is the plan? No, I just want to uh, speak blessing to this uh, sure family. Um, and I pray that uh, may this, uh, all the members, all of us that uh, continue to love each other, let the unity be in the midst of this uh, sure family, and um, just uh, continue with our faith that uh, as we walk with God, as we have heard about the message of pastor, it's really very encouraging that um, uh, when the time, when this uh, trumpet, we hear it, uh, this your family will be included during the rapture. Amen. So, amen, amen. So, we continue to stand firm with our faith and let the Holy Spirit dwell in us every day of our lives amen. until until this uh, trumpet sounds. Amen. And I speak blessing and I pray for our Pastor Hector, whom God, whom God has used for this uh, sure family. And with all the people hearing, with all this uh, preaching of our pastor, I praise and thank our Almighty God, and I pray that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ will continue to give him uh, the strength, the good health, and the power, the wisdom, and the knowledge that is coming from our Lord Jesus Christ, so that whatever the mission, whatever the will of our Lord Jesus Christ with the life of our pastor Hector will be fulfilled, especially in leading and guiding this uh, sure family as well as to all the people hearing the message and uh, so that everyone, uh, we will not be left behind when this trumpet sounds and all of us will be raptured by uh, the power of the Holy Spirit and by God's grace. We will all be together in the kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you, Pastor. Thank you for uh, your love, for all your support, for praying, to, for praying for each and every one of us. And we are really blessed because God had uh, placed you in this uh, ministry and uh, may God will continue to bless you exceedingly abundantly uh, and with all your whole family and thank you Lord for his life and thank you Lord for each and every one of this your family and we are so blessed because of you Lord Jesus Christ amen. thank you thank you Lord amen amen, amen. anyone that wants to uh Parting uh, message from uh, Mr. Alice. Anyone? Take this time. Take this time. Take this time. Release natin sa kanya yung uh, blessing. The message of blessing. Hello po ate. So come here and release the blessing. <laughs> release the blessing. Hello po. We will miss you, po. We will miss you, but we know that um, nowadays uh, communication is not that hard. So, yeah, we will still gonna be communicating with each other, naman through online. So, we just really want to speak blessing to you and release a blessing. Sabi nga po niya doon sa salita niya sa Job, di ba? Na wherever your your feet um, may take you, and doon palagi ang ano ng Panginoon. So, yeah, so. 
nandoon ka man sa Pilipinas, we know that the Lord will continue to use your life. So, God bless po. God bless. God bless. Thank you very much. Amen. Wow. Ate, congratulations. <laughs> um, to reach this, uh, you know, um, time for the life of Ate, it's, uh, it's not easy after 18 years, yeah. isn't it, Ate? To go back home, to start, uh, uh, well, she's the blessing, t carrying the blessing back to the Philippines. And we pray, Ate, for... Um, God will guide you for your whatever your plans, and um, God will strengthen you there. Na pero pag malungkot ka ate, anytime you can come back, isn't it? By she can stay with us anytime. <laughs> Marami kang ano matitirhan dito, <laughs> but as I just said, we are here for you. Um, um, the only I can alam ko si ate dito ang sisiran kami ng prayer and. Thank you, Ate, as my Ate, as a spiritual Ate. And yeah, ang, pabaong, ang pabaong ko lang sa'yo, Ate, is uh, take the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Kasi even our body is wearing off or there is tiredness or kapaguran sa ating araw-araw na pamumuhay. But if the joy of the Lord is our strength, ano man ang pagod, ano man ang kabisihan po, but we have to seek God first. At alam natin that God will honor what our hearts desire. Amen. God bless, Ate. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's really hard to say, to say goodbye, but this is not the end. We know spiritually and with the love of the Lord, we are still together. And... Uh, and I know that this, everybody knows, I think, that this me and Alice uh, came here together on the year of 2005, April. So we are also working together in Saudi Arabia. And uh, yeah, we have a struggle here when we came here, but ups and downs that, uh, anyway, we're still together. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's the time that uh, I know that uh, Alice, uh, Anyway, we will see it still uh, in, in in the in the Philippines, and and, and uh, I know that um, I I hope that um, uh, God bless you and uh, and um, good health for you, and I know that you still come back here because I, I think your your ticket is uh, <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> so and uh, and <laughs> yeah yeah. So I hope that uh, you will um, also enjoy your um, um, stay with your family because a long time that uh, you, you are not with them and, and, uh, and see you in May. <laughs> Thank you. God bless. Hello, Ate Ali. So, oh, my goodness. Oh, my miss kita. Uh, every time nakakain ako ng pakwan <laughs> at manga, <laughs> naalala kita. <laughs> Ayun, uh, just, uh, I'm very happy for you. And I know that God will guide you in the Philippines. I know sometimes uh, we want uh, something in our life, but we don't know what is best for us. But I know God knows what is best for you. So we will speak blessing for you, Ate, and for your family back home. As I told you before, that uh, you're welcome again because we are a family also. So you're most welcome here, at, uh, in, even in our house. Kahit marami kang bahay sa kanya. <laughs> na matitiran. So don't worry. Uh, ayun lang. May mimiss ka namin at uh, huwag kang makakalimot lalo na sa Panginoon. Thank you ate sa lahat. Okay. Mm -hmm. In Christ Jesus. <laughs> ate Alice. Uh, God has a purpose. And we know what's the purpose. So um, continue to ano, um, be, ano, uh, yun, mag-fish ka sa Pilipinas. Uh, ayun, maraming, ano, maraming, uh, 
Ayun. So, uh, we would like to release our blessing to you. We will miss you uh, physically, but we know spiritually we are all together. Yeah? Sabi nga ni Lorna, pag may manga kami at saka pakuan, <laughs> we are going to miss you kasi wala kaming kahate. <laughs> God bless you always, ate. And ano, may God continue to uh, cover you with His precious blood and keep you safe. And we're going to miss you. I just would like to thank the Lord for the life of Ate Alice kasi um, Sorry ah. Uh, we will miss you. Uh, thank you for the encouragement na binibigay mo sa amin especially sa women bible study um, during those times na minsan uh, we're just the two of us <laughs> but you still encourage me thank you and uh, may you be a blessing sa church mo sa Philippines and to your family just enjoy their, your time with them God bless you Ate Alice, good, morning, good afternoon po. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, like uh, what the other brothers and sisters said, we will gonna miss you. Alam naman namin na uh, na oh, uh, every time na kasama ka namin eh, we are masaya and mamimiss namin yung presensya mo. Mamimiss namin yung mga jokes mo, kahit yung mga tawa mo. Pero madami lang yan, six months lang naman yan. Eh. Kaya <laughs> we will kind of miss you. Mamimiss namin yung hiwa ng pakwan mo. At saka yung mga nawawala, mamimiss namin yun. Mamimiss namin yung mabigat na bag mo na alam namin na may laman. Uh, <laughs> saka mas mamimiss namin yung butchie mo na mamantika. Pero hindi, <laughs> as outside from that. <laughs> Uh, we will gonna miss you and alam na uh, hindi ka mag, alam na uh, huwag ka makakalimot and we will miss you and we love you take care and God bless you thank you thank you makasya lang ka namin sa December hi ate <laughs> I know um you will just be there for four months to check your piggery business or what? <laughs> no, I'm just. Yeah. Um, thank you for all this, ano, lahat ng um, sacrifices mo para sa amin, yung mga advices mo. We will miss those, yung laughters, yung pagluluto mo na punong puno na sabaw. Mami miss namin. Your jokes na walang punchline. Ma we will miss those. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, we, we know that uh, uh, the Lord will use you wherever you are. Yeah. You guys sa Philippines. Uh, I know um, He will be there to protect you and guide you yeah. every time. And uh, yes, safe travels. And uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs> God bless. Farewell, my friend, my sister, and my ate. Maybe miss yung isda namin. Sige ka. But uh, I want to see God bless you. Mamimiss ka namin. God bless you. God protect you. 
God will keep you and God shine upon you Amen. and be gracious to you. Amen. God bless. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else, boy? Anyone who wants yeah, yeah. to? Uh, uh, it's good because it's on video, so Ate Alice can keep on revisiting it. Ah, Anyone take yes. this opportunity? Ata, we just would like to thank you for everything, for being always with us and um, just continue to walk in the light of the Lord. And wherever you will go, just remember that we're always here as your family and we will be in touch. Napakabilis ng ano, social media this time. So it will not be a long, long way. I think you will be back soon. So. Thank you for all, and you will be blessed, and God bless amen, you. Amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Alice. <laughs> uh, I still remember uh, the time. Uh, do you remember uh, when we had a struggle about our visa? We cry about this one, isn't it? Mm. We extend our visa. Uh, last, uh, what, what year is that? 2000 and, 2006 or 2000, 2005? And then, yeah, it's too, yeah. But, uh, but the things, the Lord is in the middle of that problem, of the trial, isn't it? Even, uh, yeah, you transfer to Midlands, Athens, and you, so we still, uh, uh, asking for uh, for pray for uh, it's always the God it's not the, in the middle. Hallelujah, and thanks God uh, you are the part uh, that's your family, and especially my own family. Uh, uh, how many years that uh, we are together yeah. in in my house? So uh, thanks for everything, and. Thanks also for the, you fool my garage of your things. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, uh, thanks for, uh, to let me know that uh, I will throw it everything. <laughs> but I will, I will collect first, maybe there is something new there, or I can wear it, or I can give to charity, <laughs> all right? <laughs> I want to say uh, God bless and we love you all. Amen. Okay. Thank you, amen. And amen. we'll come back again next year. <laughs> I will come back by God's grace. Marami na akong matutuluyan so so magtatagal tayo. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> Masalama. Masalama. <laughs> and it's just a short, it's just only three months only mm -hmm. uh, that we knew each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then, yeah, mm -hmm. since I started uh, yeah. attending this. And uh, thank you for changing, swapping stories when, while, when we were in MCU. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she graduated from MCU and I worked there when mm -hmm. she was there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also at the hospital, uh, the, our experience in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia yeah, well, especially yeah. during, mm -hmm. Gu during mm -hmm. Gulf War. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna miss you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you very much. Ako magahatid sa kanya. <laughs> you stay with me there in the airport. <laughs> Make sure nakapasok siya sa immigration. <laughs> Praise God, because God gave uh, yeah. her to me to accompany in the airport. Yeah. Na makasama ko doon at least. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very You're much. Welcome, Even goodness. for the short of time, mm -hmm. God already and don't put forget us, uh, our the love in our Heart. Yeah, I have a small surprise for you. Good. But before we eat, I'll make sure that we have that surprise for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special number. Sur surprise. <laughs> oh. Okay. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sister Bassi. <laughs> Jemima, you're next. Jemima. 
the Alice, uh, continue to walk in the light, and uh, we pray also that uh, the Lord will uh, use you uh, continuously and mightily wherever you go. Amen. Yeah, and um, always, always stick to the Lord. Uh, uh, yeah, wherever you go, especially in the Philippines, that, uh, you know, uh, we pray also that uh, you can touch uh, people's lives uh, and uh, encourage them to to turn to the Lord amen, amen. and to surrender their lives to them. Yeah, uh, we're going to miss you and good luck and, I mean, God bless, yeah, and take care always. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? For boys, you wanna say something to uh, Sister Tita Alice? Why do I, why do I have to? Because <laughs> you said, let's okay, go. Okay, fine, I'll be there. Because all this to you. Um, we'll miss you. <laughs> yeah, we'll also, also miss when you do the selfie stick. <laughs> we'll, we'll miss the oh, selfie oh, stick oh, thing. <laughs> Did you bring it with you today, or no? <laughs> Aww. No, no more time to do it's, it. a, it's okay. <laughs> Maybe you can do it for me now. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go? <laughs> Sandra, come on. <laughs> uh, Tita Alice, uh, thank you for all you've done. Thank you for everything you've done in our church, and we'll miss you. I miss you all. Thank you. Um, thank you for the nice children prayers um, during the service and the selfies. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, hi, Tita. Hello. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's good that you're like, always with us with a selfie stick. So we have memories. <laughs> and <laughs> hopefully we'll see you soon if that's four weeks or four years <laughs> but we'll, <see. laughs> we'll miss you yeah. okay thank you my dear okay continue to walk with the Lord okay and be used by God with this ministry in the music Anyone yeah, else? yeah, really. <laughs> now you see. <laughs> Anyone else who wants to about you, my Albert? You wanna say something? Oh, Glaisa, you wanna say something to Tita? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we we give you your release paper. <laughs> <laughs> this is your <laughs> this is your release paper. <laughs> uh, it's good. It's good because uh, everything is uh, <laughs> recorded in the video. So, uh, and you know, we, alam mo namang mag-operate ng Facebook, di ba? <laughs> so you can keep on going back and you can review it. So uh, you can, uh, para maalala mo ang lahat ng mga kapatid. And um, uh, wala pa dyan yung palaman. Ha? Ano pa lang? Ito pa lang yung thoughts and... <laughs> Ito pa lang yung mga thoughts and uh, yung mga thoughts ng mga kapatid captured in uh, writing and ito pala pinaalam ko to kanina eh to to <laughs> I, I'm sure gusto mo to eh <laughs> and uh, yeah we will miss we will miss a lot uh, kay sister Alice and uh, I want to correct Brother Ramon, hindi namin mamimiss yung uh, butchi mo na mamantika. Mamimiss namin yung mantika na may butchi. <laughs> no, no, um, uh, we were so blessed. No, we were so blessed. Uh, katulad ng palagi nating sinasabi na hindi man tayo mabigyan ng pagkakataon to come and stand in front. But uh, our coming together, our fellowshipping together is we minister.
to one another. No, not necessarily na you come in the front and stand. Even you guys, even as you sat there, you minister to us as well. You encourage us as well. No, so that includes you. Um, uh, yeah, the past, uh, uh, the past. Um, uh, I think um, uh, obviously the church is seven, but even the past um, uh, eleven years. No, 11 years nung, di ba yung sa Friends of Christ and wow, it's all these 11 years there's a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, memories a lot of things that had happened na uh, pinagsamasamahan natin, pinagsalusaluhan natin and I was so blessed kung nakita nyo yung Sister Alice 11 years ago parang Iva na lang eh no, parang Iva na lang. Kung... <laughs> Iva na malayo. <laughs> so, um, we were so blessed and um, we always appreciate you. We always enjoy worshiping and serving the Lord alongside you. No, Siguro ako, eh, to be honest, malungkot. I'm so... I'm so sad, malungkot na, although alam natin na obviously, Sister Alice uh, made that decision for her own good, for her own welfare. But I think personally, andun na malungkot, katulad ng iba, na talagang nakakalungkot nga naman talaga. But uh, make our joy complete, sabi nga niya sa salita ng Panginoon. Sabi ni Apostle Paul sa kanyang mga disciples na, make our joy complete na mabalitaan namin that you are growing in faith. Mabalitaan namin na you are maturing in faith. Mabalitaan namin na ginagamit ka ng Panginoon in your local church sa uh, Mongkada. Amen. And uh, alongside sa message natin ngayon, uh, it's about time. There's always room to be separated. Eva? There's always room to be separated. Amen? Uh, let's separate. So at least doon, wala na si Mirfat. Di ba? <laughs> wala na si Mirfat. Wala na si John C. So, <laughs> yung mga challenges na wawala din. So, we can concentrate. Amen po. No? But, uh, maraming salamat, Sister Alice. We'll pray for you. But before we pray for you, I just want to call out to all the single men and committed the Christian men in Moncada and to all the neighboring towns in cities, watch out. <laughs> watch out. Someone is coming to you. <laughs> Amen. Single and uh, ready to mingle. <laughs> now let's, 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 stand, uh, let's extend our hands to our sister Alice. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Glorify your name, Lord. Father, thank you for the times and the seasons of our life. Indeed, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, Father God. There is a time of meeting up. There is a time of gathering together. There is a time, Father God, of breaking bread together. There is a time of sharing ourselves with one another, Lord. And Lord, a time to be separated, which is, Father God, yes, sad to say, but it is in accordance with your plan that we will be separated momentarily, or we believe temporarily, Father God, from our dearly beloved sister, Sister Alice, and Father God, in behalf of all the family members of this church, Father, we speak blessing, Father God, upon her life. We speak the miracle, Father God, that happens day to day, Father God, to be upon her, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Lord, may she continue to persevere in faith. May she continue to exercise and practice and dedicate that faith to you. Thank you very much, Lord, so long up until you will gather and bring us all back together, Father God. If it is not, Lord, 
in the Philippines, if it is not in this country, then we guess in glory, Father God, when you come and call all the saints in you. So thank you so much, Father God. We have something to look forward to, whether be Philippines, whether be UK, or whether be in the air. We are excited because we know and we do believe, Sister Alice including, that each and every one of us will be gathered with you in that time. And thank you so much. And Father God, continue to be her comfort. Again, it's going to be uh, a changes, Father. Continue to be her comfort. Continue to be her strength and company, Father God. And even the body, Father God, in here, Lord, that will be sad as well, that will be longing. Father, uh, continue to release your spirit of comfort as well upon each and every one. And Lord, we continue to lift up everything unto you up until that moment that she will leave, Father God, in Borden. Traveling, Father God, to the airport, from the airport, Father God, to the Philippines, and completing going home to Moncada. We pray for your traveling grace and mercy to be upon her. We pray for the safety and security, Father God, to be upon her. The blood of Jesus to cover her, Father God. Minister safety and security to be upon her, O God. Thank you for the preservation and gift of life, O God. Lord, we rebuke whatever illnesses. We rebuke whatever challenges. We rebuke whatever works. And whilst in the schemes of the enemy, Father God, that will take away all the wonderful plans of our dear sister Alice in retirement, Father God. Continue to serve as her provision. Continue to serve as her inspiration and encouragement, Father God. And Lord, whether it is your plan to bring her feet back into this land, Father God, we submit and surrender, Father God, according to your wonderful and remarkable plans, Father. Lord, the way that we have sent and released her forth with our love, with our blessing, with our care and everything, Father. Lord, we pray that the same degree or tenfolds, Father God, will uh, be used to welcome her in the Philippines, Father God. Her family members, the church that she is part of, the community that she is part of. Thank you very much, Father God. Thank you very much, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. And uh, yes, Father God, let everything that had happened amongst and around us all continue to linger in our heart, in our mind, and in our thoughts, Father God. In memory, Lord, to look forward for that time na ibibigay mo sa aming bawat isa, Father, na magkita-kitang muli. Thank you, Lord. Pinupuri ka namin, pinapasalamatan ka namin, itinataas namin ang iyong pangalan sa buhay ng aming kapatid, our dear Sister Alice. Amen. 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 Oh. We'll proceed there and uh, surprise ba? So, maraming salamat okay. po sa inyong lahat-lahat. I love you all with the love of the Lord. Amen. Amen.